broadcasting from the Meredith Hall Studios out of Carson City, Nevada. You're listening to Covering the Field with Big Richard Martin, Gator Gates, and Joe the Answer Ellison. Welcome to Covering the Field. I'm Joe Ellison, and with me today are my amazing colleagues, Big Richard Martin, Gator Gates, and Rocket Ronnie McKinnon. Thank you, Joe. Glad to be here, man. Yeah, it's it's really good to be here. Especially with all four of us. Yeah, good to see you guys, man. Good to see Rocket Ronnie in the studio. It's a big rich where we left off last Wednesday in the NBA's Western Conference. Denver and Phoenix already wrapped up their first round series. While the Lakers were up 3-1 over Memphis, Sacramento and Golden State were knotted up at two games apiece. What happened? Well, we have to just talk about the Road Warriors. The Road Warriors, Golden State Road Warriors. How they pull off two impressive road games. Every time you try to write these guys off, they come back and just show that they're the class act of, of the NBA. I mean, this is just their generation. And what do we get for their great comeback win? We get Seth Curry and LeBron James. Yeah. So we get a classic matchup. So I'll give you guys a sick or swim right off the bat there, you guys. Okay. Um, who has LeBron James played more against the Warriors in the playoffs or against the Boston Celtics? Oh, well, probably have to be the Warriors at this point. Mm, he was down. I, I I'm, I'm going to say Celtics because he was I, with Miami. How long was he there? Miami, Cleveland. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just don't remember or, uh, Boston playing that well. Play, well, uh, play, well, he did. Miami. He's played Boston more barely. Oh, but if I think that maybe after this series they might be able to catch up. But right, right. now Boston does have a slight edge. He's played them a little bit more, being from the East. He has had right. some multiple NBA final games against the Warriors. Been really great to watch. Uh, especially to being down three to one and coming back, uh, uh, just a tr- tr- terrific doubt. This is just we can't get any better for the NBA to get in these kind of series. So let's just talk about the Road Warriors. I mean, the game seven was that just a classic? I mean, you look at you know for the uh, Thompson uh, was two for ten for threes, and uh, Thompson, Wiggins, and Poole were combined shot twenty three percent in game seven. Wow, and Golden. Uh, Golden One uh, Stadium or uh, Arena, and uh, what do we have? Well, we just have Stephen Curry. He just says, "I put get on the back. Don't don't need to discuss much. I'll just take care of business, guys." He drops fifty in Game Seven and a classic beatdown of the Kings. And then you got to talk about Kevon Looney, do we? I mean, he's averaging 20, 20 rebounds about a game, uh, ten offensive rebounds every time he gets an offensive rebound. Steph Curry gets another shot out of three. So, I mean, just turned out to be great. It was great. Let's, let's talk about the Kings. The Kings were great. Um, to get to there, they had a, a massive uh, game six. I thought that for sure that the uh, Warriors were going to close it out in six. But as just as Joe predicted, the Warriors won a seven. Yep. Well, thanks. Yeah, the Warriors <laughs> only scored two points in the last four minutes of game six. Otherwise, they might have closed that out. Right. Terrible. They were terrible. I mean, just lethargic. They just did not. I mean, I think they thought maybe they were just going to lay down after, you know, getting that game five road win. And, uh, hey, how can you the, the first four games go to the home teams, the last three go to the road. So you can't predict this because I can show you my like wadded hockey, up tickets in my like. trash can. That, uh, <laughs> um, I thought for sure. Yeah, exactly. By hockey. So we did get it. We it was just a classic series. And uh, the Kings, they're, they're going to be a team in the future. They're young. Um, they definitely have some good things going there. Okay. And after, uh, in the other side of that uh, series, Memphis won game five and then LA won game six, 125 to 85. Got to see old Jack Nicholson back. Uh, yeah. He brought the luck. First game, one, first 40 game all point, season. Man, 40 point win on I just smashed yeah, those kids. He's, he's season tickets off for the Lakers, but he hasn't. And well, they haven't been that know. good, Ronnie. They're a weather fan. You've seen too many championships. <laughs> but D'Angelo Russell was awesome. Uh, he had 31 yeah. points. And, you know, Anthony Davis, you know, he's 22 points, 15 rebounds, and four blocks. He's getting it done playing at an elite level right now. And we can also thank uh, Villain Brooks. Won't be in Memphis next year. Yeah. Not speaking to the media, he got fined and totally fired up the Lakers. Right. And I think after uh, that game, he had a big red uh, tag in his, in his locker saying, uh, you're – your presence will not be with us, and you you can move on. I Gibbs, Dylan Brooks. Okay, he's 
he took the challenge on. I, I, I get it. You know, he's not, you play to win the game. You're professional. Uh, somebody's going to pick him up and he's got a lot of good basketball in him. He's yeah. good. He's a good player. He's, you know, scores in the double digits every game and um, good defender. Um, but, but, you know, you just don't want to poke the bear. Yeah, that's right. So that led to game one with LA and Golden State in the must see matchup. A must see sure matchup. It's the great. Round. Well, let's just talk about the sink or swim, fellas. When they start off with, we, you know, we got LeBron and Curry. We got to have, we got to have a couple sink or swims with these guys. Okay. So we're going to start off with, they're both from Ohio. I'll give you a little hint. Um, were they both born in the same hospital? Steph Curry, mm. sink or swim. I say they were born in the same hospital, sink or swim. Oh, I have to go sink. What are the odds of that happening? So we got one sinker. Just because you're asking, though. No, I'm, I'm, I'm taking. I'm, I, <laughs> um, I'm going to say sink, even if they were close to the same town. Yeah, me as well. Same town. Well, you all three should have swam because they were born. Two classics yeah. were born. Yes, they were born in Akron Medical uh, Facility, and they. I'll give you another secret swim. They Did the they same. have? Were they born in the same room? <laughs> Did they go to the same school? Oh, yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go sink again. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, I any further. They did not know. No, when they asked Steph Curry where they born in the same room, they were born actually a thousand days apart, so about three years. And um, wow. So we'll talk about one more sinker. I'm gonna give you one more sinker swim with these guys because I think it's so fun. They did, actually, Stephen Curry went to North Carolina. And oh, where's no, uh, I was thinking so, high school. Okay, no. high school. He yeah. that's where he went to North no, Carolina. No. So he went to North Carolina, okay. even though he's born in <laughs> like LeBron. Okay. But I'll give you one more secret symbol of those two. LeBron James had a higher GPA in high school than Steph Curry. Oh, oh wow. Um I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go sink. sink. I, I think Stephen Curry with his dad, Dill Curry, and everything. I think he oh, and he played golf too. You, you know, so I'm thinking he's good at math. He he math. math. Okay. He's probably the guy. I would say that too. I would say sink. I would say you guys were wrong all day. So we have GPA 2.8 uh GPA compared to a 2.5 uh for Stephen Curry. So mm-hmm. there's not a lot of help from his dad. Uh, but uh, not at all. Not at all. But I'll give you this: Ben <laughs> Simmons graduated with a 1.8 uh, and went to Washington University. So how do you get a scholarship when you only have a 1.8 average? Because you're very good at basketball. That's all. All right. Well, but anyway, explain that. Game. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. The two of the you know probably <laughs> no doubt top five uh, basketball players of all time uh, were born in the same hospital. That's amazing. And, uh, and, and so not everybody up. is trying to get their sons that they want to be basketball players that go to this day or have a waiting list right. to get in there to have your wow. baby because, you know, I'm kidding on that. <laughs> yeah, not true. Huh? Um, but still, I mean, you know, what are the odds of that happening? So it's really cool. Another uh, Southern mm-hmm. California, Northern California thing, except I'm not a Laker fan. So, and, but I don't like Golden State even worse. So, <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for sharing your hatred there, Ronnie. Uh, <laughs> we know, uh, you know, yeah, if you're a Southern Calgary, you know, you have a big, uh, big rivalry, but is, this is, doesn't get any bigger rivalry than this. And uh, the Lakers hold off a big run at the end and win game one. Yep. Anthony Davis, 30 points, 23 rebounds. Uh, they have a uh, size advantage for sure. Right, and you can see the difference between Kevin Looney when he plays against a big, strong guy like Anthony Davis compared to how he was playing uh, Sabonis against the uh, yeah. and yeah, uh, in Sacramento. So you can see he's not going to have that kind of series. You're not getting all those extra shots. And I mean, it was great. Uh, me and my producer were in watching the game, and, and we just couldn't believe that when they double team Steph Curry and they're down by three, that they they had a timeout. Why didn't you call a timeout and set up a play? Uh, it was the right. big question mark uh, of the night, I would say. And then, you know, Jordan Pold decides he's going to shoot a 28-footer. 31-footer. <laughs> he's 31-footer. Yeah, um, you know, you're not Stephen Curry. You got no. Stephen Curry, the best he shooter in basketball. Earlier in I would say Clay Thompson, if he was open, that would have been fine, but not Jordan Pold. Okay, well, that's game one. So who's going to win the series? Well, this is tough. I think everybody was saying Golden State in seven – now Lakers have home court. They've played the best since the, since the All Star break. Anthony Davis is playing at a level. It's just, it's going to go down. I'm just going to enjoy watching it. But I'm going to say that you know it has to go to the Lakers after Game One. I would have to say you have to say Lakers to get past this. And of course, that was your pick to go to the NBA Finals, Joey. So I already know yep. what you're going to say. Yep. Uh, the last eleven times they met, uh, the Lakers won and covered seven out of those eleven games. So they actually play well. That's during the season. Um, yeah. 
and they've been injury prone and had to make some, yeah. you know, some trade deadline moves to get to this point. And people were counting the Lakers out completely, not even making the playoffs. And now look at them. They're, uh, they're yeah. well, three tra- games away from going to the finals. Those trades. Coming to the, uh, the, the, the championship. Yeah. yeah, the Western championship. The trades they made were amazing. Uh, also, uh, Lakers led the league in free throw attempts. Warriors were last in free throw attempts. So you're going to see the Lakers going to the hoop a lot. Right, and Warriors are shooting a lot of threes like normal. So. And, and Steph Curry's having a little bit of trouble from the line. Uh, he's not shooting his normal 80, 90, 85 to ninety percent. He's, I mean, I think he was shooting better from the three point line than he was from the free throw line. Uh, maybe he can step back and just shoot from beyond the arc, or just taking it at half court like he normally does in the All Star games. But no, uh, you That's know, it's just great to watch. I'm just enjoying it. I mean, I can see it going either way. I'm going to try not to bet on those games, as my wife is laughing at me in the studio right now because she knows I'm going to bet on it. Uh, but um, well, hey, full, I just enjoyed uh, it. Full on expect the Warriors to win game two. Uh, home teams in that first round. And uh, this round, 5-0 and and losing their first game at home. So um, hmm. game two, they usually bounce back. In fact, every time this year, they have bounced back. And the Warriors are a bounce back team you've yep. seen all year. So, so one don't, count out the, don't count out the Warriors. But why? Okay. But why does anybody talk about the Denver Nuggets? I mean, they're the number one seed in the West, right? And it just seems like those guys get no respect. They handled Minnesota, you know, for they should have swept them. Um, they had to take game five. I think it goes off of their history, Big Richard. I mean, it's one of those things that I have to see it to believe it type thing. Okay. Well, and but I'm with you, Big Richard. I, I see it all the time. Nobody's giving them any love. I mean, the two time MVP, and wait. We need to call a police officer producer because Nicole Jokic got robbed from the MVP. I think he should have been the MVP. I think they only gave it to him, uh, Joel Embiid, because he's uh, Jokic. Jokic won the last two. Um, but the, as you saw game game two when they, they smashed Phoenix, he was just amazing. Uh, he played like the MVP. Uh, you looked at, you, you know, Murray and Michael Porter were five for 22 for the game. So there's your two big stars besides Jokic, and they shot 22% from the field. Jokic had no problem. They had a double-double again. Uh, but we got to talk about uh Contagious Cotal Pope. He was just about perfect. He was uh he was five for five for uh he was seven for eight from the from the field. And no, he was, I'm sorry, he was nine for ten and four for four from the three-point line. So he was out obviously. Picking up the slack where some other guys weren't. Well, I know I know a lot of uh, writers were uh, going for him, but um, I, I agree with you 100%. Why isn't Jokic there? You, you know, if, if it wasn't for that, Denver wouldn't even be this. Right. Wouldn't even I, be here. And you see what we'll, we'll talk about about Joel Bean not missing oh. game one and still. Yeah. Sixers. How many games did he play in the regular season? Who, Jokic or no, Embiid? Embiid, yeah, Embiid yeah, no, sixty-five. Under, yeah, exactly. He was under player. He was under management. You know, yes. for sure. Um, but Jokic seems like he goes out every night. He, and, exactly. That's my play. point. And uh, you know, he just he's a great team player, and I'm um, I'm liking seeing Denver right now. I think that they can maybe even sweep because Chris uh, Chris Paul is doubtful for Game Three and Four, so yes. he probably will not be playing. Yep. We just had it 66 games he played this year. So out of, you know, he took 20 games off, you know, so that's like fourth of the season. <laughs> so, um, but well, Denver yeah. had uh, six players, uh, average 10 plus points in the last round. So right. they are an unselfish team and Jokic is unselfish there. One, uh, first game was high scoring, the second game low scoring. And, um, I'm picking Denver in five. I'm going to give Phoenix one game. You have to, you really yeah. do. But without Chris Paul, the Ransom is really going to have to pick it up and, um, you know, I think it's just going to be, you know, Booker can still score 35 and you're still going to lose. So, um, you know, yeah, I just think Denver's playing great. So I think that's our West. You, you, I'm saying it's going to be Denver Lakers. What are you guys saying? Are you, are you anybody Denver Lakers? Oh, um, that's what I got, Denver Lakers. Nice. You know, and you already know that uh, Lakers and uh, – Yeah, we got Bonnie go who Lakers hates Golden seven. State. He, so he's not even going to – so you're going to say they're going to win on the road again. I'm going to win a, game seven on the road. That'll be tough to do. Then, and, well, uh, okay, I'll lay in six then. That's okay, my second choice. That's like, that's okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, well, all right. Well, I think well, I've said I don't like the Lakers either. I'll never have. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, you can go with Boston. We'll talk about Boston. You want to talk about Boston, Ronnie? All right. <laughs> <laughs> no one can talk about uh, the Lakers anymore, I guess, on the show. But, uh, you know, yeah, you got let's, a let's classic let's game going here. The classic. Yeah. Well, first we have to talk about just Milwaukee's complete failure. Yeah. Um, how do you be the number one seed and take it out? And Tumbo was like, and Tumbo was, did you yeah. see that interview yeah. afterwards? Yeah. 
Yeah. What does call him? John is. Yeah. Okay. And uh, um, John has really ripped the, the reporter. Um, Would you consider this season a failure was the question. Right. And when you get beat by the eight seed. Right. By the the eight 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 seed, seed. Uh, yeah. I think there's no other way to say it's a failure. Um, if you're, if, if you have your standards where they should be, if you're competing for an NBA championship every year, like Milwaukee should be, I think that, you know, you have the question those, you know, Michael Jordan only won six of his 15 seasons. Would he consider his nine years failure? Mm. Right. I think he would. Well, maybe he would, yeah. but Jonas doesn't have that mentality. He's uh, happy winning games and, uh, you know, only one. When team. Maybe, you know, win him. Yeah. Get, you win some, you lose some. Some, Give him a participation trophy. Don't give him the you know NBA Finals trophy. I don't know. It wasn't but Michael Jordan was. It wasn't his fault. No, uh, he was out. You know, he just seemed like he, he did miss a game though. Then he did. He was he out. One uh, game? Yeah, I think he was out one. But uh, I think it also came down. Well, first Jimmy Butler pushing off to tie the game in that uh, last game. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. Okay. I mean, all, then, all, all heroes don't wear capes, <laughs> Joe. All heroes don't wear capes. And, and then you in know. overtime, Budenholzer, the coach. Doesn't call a timeout. They never even got a shot off. I know they had, well, they had like, yeah, like three. Eight, I think they had point eight seconds. I, was, no, I, they could have. They could have get the timeout. Would have given eight. Was it eight seconds? Maybe it, eight? it was like seven, eight seconds. And they didn't have time out. My producer move, on this. How much time? Give the ball to half court, and they yeah, they would have got on half court. They would have had a catch and shoot. Never sure. got a shot off. Right. Okay. My well, brother so, did. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The same amount of time. So that was a big choke. And right. Butler was amazing. Uh, he scored 98 points in the last two games. So um, can't beat that. So I'm blaming partly the coach. Of course, uh, New York closed out Cleveland in five. Um, you know, that's Boston had a little tough time with the Hawks, though. They, they had to go, to, had to go all the way to six. Six. six, where we yeah. left off. Um, then, uh, of course, uh, Bo- uh, where, where, where were we at? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, that's the first time that we've had a one- no, uh, a one and a two seed both lose in the first round. Right, and in the NBA, that just never happens. So, well, I tell you, the exciting. Lakers took care of business, and so did Miami. Jerry Butler. Yeah. This might is this maybe a foreshadow for the Lakers in Miami and a repeat from the bubble? Yeah, it could be a repeat. Could be a repeat. Okay, and well, Lakers we've... Celtics in the. <laughs> That's what you want to see exactly, Lakers Celtics. You know, so right, we started that Philly uh, Boston series. A bit of a surprise, huh? and Joel Embiid was out, as we were talking about. Uh, yeah, no yes, Embiid, no our, problem. Our MVP, huh? James, you have James Harden, Cameroon. <laughs> yes, didn't play. Uh, Philly wins anyway, one nineteen, one fifteen, six to one odds on uh, Embiid to win the uh, MVP. By the mm-hmm. way, if you had it, that would have been a good pick there. If you Philly put hasn't some, uh, been green on that final since two thousand one, so this is uh, going to be maybe in Boston, some territory yeah. that they haven't been down in a long time. I think everybody was trying to parlay that with their money line, Boston and the money line. Uh, well, yeah. yeah, how can they possibly it was a 10 lose? Points. Exactly. You know, um, I took them. I had the ten points because I said it's a. You know, Philly's going. They're definitely got a good bench. They got a good team. Oh, even before that game, I thought Philadelphia. Them winning doesn't shock me, you know, in Boston. And, and well, tell me how they did it. Well, I tell you how they did it. They shot 17 three pointers. They yeah. shot 44.7% from beyond the arc. So, um, you know, and the rebounding, it's out without Embiid, that would be a problem. Boston only had four four rebounds more than 40 to 36. Hard so, had, uh, uh, 45 points, right? Harden had 45. And uh, uh, DeAnthony Melton came off the bench, 17 points. Uh, okay. Fourth year player out of USC. And uh, Tyrese uh, uh, Maxi Maxi had twenty six points. No, yep. and uh, Harris had Harris had eighteen. So they, you know they picked it up and uh, they got a little bit of uh, momentum going there. Um, they've only lost one game in the playoffs. Well, much like Golden State, I expect Boston to win Game Two. Uh, like I said, home teams five and zero oh after a game one loss. So, well, Joe B has it. been averaging twenty points, eleven point rebounds per game. So. I like even the odds went from 10 to one to seven and a half to one when the NBA said he was going to play. Okay. So um, the game has begun very early, very early as we speak right now. Right. Do you have a prediction uh, as to uh, who's going to win this series? I'm going to say it's going to be Philadelphia. Mm. I'm going to say Philly. I'm going to call it out. If they can win on the road without Embiid, Boston has been very skeptical. Uh, even though I picked Boston to go to the finals, um, I just right. think that they've had tough with the Hawks, and now they're going to get Joel Bead, and you know he, he has something to prove. Defense, high questions. Uh, well, they usually have one of the best. Defense. You know, Smart was the defensive player right. of the year last year, yeah, but I'm questioning. And, I'm questioning Boston's yeah. defense. 
just got to have that hunger. I think that, I think yep. that Philadelphia is hungry to get there. They haven't been there in a while. And Long like while. we said, we've had last well, year. For, for the last four years, a different East representative right. in Philadelphia isn't one of those. Mm. Boston is. Boston. Miami is. Right. So mm. that narrows it down to New York and Philly if we I continue still, that trend. I've got to go with my Celtics. Ooh. All right. Well, I'm going to pick. With, and that's, a, that's a good bet. I think that's a good bet. I'm going to pick Boston in seven. Uh, other series, uh, Miami, New York, uh, New York walked up 1 1. Uh, of course, Butler rolled his ankle. Is that going to be? Uh, well, first he rolled the Knicks in game one, and then he uh, <laughs> rolled his ankle after during the, that rolling. Uh, but, you know, Jim, Jimmy Butler is going to be a game time decision with that ankle injury. But, you know, like, you know, they, they, and Miami looked better. I watched the game last night. Um, I really liked the under without Butler there, and they obviously went over. They shot very good from the, both teams, shot very well from three point line. And, uh, you know, Randall had 25 and Jalen Brunson had 30. Uh, the Knicks shot 40% from three point line to be exact. So, um, I think that Miami definitely gets this one done. I think Miami, it's going to be, I like Miami Philly in the, that's what I'm predicting. I'm going to say Miami in six. Uh, New York, in their last seven times, losing game one in a series, they've lost them all. So Mm -hmm. history says they're not going to get there. Um, You're not very kind to the New Yorkers. It's been a while since the Knicks have been there, you know, but uh, I think they're going to have to wait another year. So Stats to keep in mind, uh, game one winners win 75% of series. Um, If we get to 3-1, 95% of series. Series tied 2-2, game five winners 82% of the time. Miami now 0 and 6 when Scott Foster referees. How about that? Scott Foster, Mr. Fix It, is back in the news. Oh, no, here he is. So, <laughs> so one of each seed, by the way, one through eight is still alive. That's never happened wow. before. Yeah. And that's incredible. So, we thank Butch the Butcher Roberts for some of those stats. Uh, move on to hockey. As per usual, the NHL playoffs have been very unpredictable. Let's start in the East. Uh, we left off. Last week, Boston was up 3-1 against mm-hmm. Florida. Toronto was leading 3-1 against Tampa. Carolina was 3-2 over the New York Islanders. New Jersey and the New York Rangers were tied 2-2. What occurred uh, since then? Okay, well, you want to start with Boston and Florida? Oh, yeah. yeah, let's get that out of the way. Boston was up 3-1, like you said, Joe, and Florida came back and uh, closed them out. Is there a hotter tea to Florida right now? Oh, Maybe the Kraken. They have been playing playoff hockey over a month now. Joe yeah. called that. He said that they beat them twice during the regular season. They matched up well. Um, you know, and then they now they've won with their first win. They've won four straight playoff games. Now, so, they, now Boston does have that jinx on them of winning that President's well, Trophy. He said it. Well, we, it we, we, yeah. we were thinking it was going to be the Knights, that the one seed going out when they lost game one uh, yeah. with that Winnipeg. 1-8. Right, I won yeah. eight. Yes, yeah. Boston, and they were one minute away from going to the next round. Yeah, they had third period leads in Game Six and Seven. The last one uh, was one minute. One You're minute right. left, yeah. and then everybody that had that, I'm sure, had Boston on all their parlays. I'm you sure know? they did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, they were going to walk away with being the chance. But you said Presidents Cup winners do not get it done, and uh, I thought for sure Boston would. Well, that's the most important. Uh, I thought they at least get a little closer, but uh, they did have injuries. Uh, Vesna Trophy. Candidate, Linus Olmark, one of the best goaltenders in the league, uh, could very well win it. He was hurt, uh, and finally they took him out in game seven. Swayman hadn't played a single game, and uh, he came in there and didn't look that great. And uh, David Krejci and P- Patrice Bergeron, their uh, top two centers, yes. they were hurt. Uh, it's probably not easy to win a game with your top two centers out, I would guess. No. Bergeron had a herniated disc, in fact, correct. and trying to play. That's uh, crazy. So, well, the Florida's goalie played great, you know. Sergi, Sergi, yeah. Bar- 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 yeah, did 34 saves in game seven. So, exactly. still a great season. Uh, 65 wins, 135 points for Boston. And it just, um, uh, we know, called it, did we call it? Everyone said Dodgers had 116 wins or something, and they went out <laughs> to get to the Mets, and yeah, and then uh, the Warriors, the, the Warriors. Cleveland and Phoenix, and Phoenix went out when they were the number one seed at last year. So it seems to happen. It seems to happen. And with like you, like Gator was talking about, playoff hockey is different than regular season well, hockey. And but that's where I was going to go with that. As far as thinking that Boston would break that jinx, Boston plays playoff hockey during the regular season. So I was a little bit scared there mm-hmm. that that would happen. Well, but, they only lose eleven games all year, and then they lose four in the play first, but first it's series. A game, but it's a different animal. Well, it seems yeah. like basketball hockey. Kind of like baseball now, it seems like a, a lot more parody. You know, some of the 
Yes. So some of the teams Absolutely. that weren't so good are better and competing more. And uh, we're seeing that in baseball. And I think basketball and hockey. And we're well. seeing it with all the income of Vegas because everybody's <laughs> right. making these right. teams yeah, and then losing their shirts. <laughs> okay. Well, Toronto uh, ended uh, three straight seasons of Tampa Bay in the Stanley Cup finals. Uh, Toronto had lost 11 straight closeout games mm-hmm. and won a series since 2004. And that was against Hollywood, Joe. Yeah, so they knocked out Tampa Bay, uh-huh. right? So we're going to have a new Stanley Cup champion that's been Tampa Bay for two years before the Colorado last year. No, I, I would like to take uh, Toronto to go all the way. Uh, well, I'm taking Edmonton to win the Stanley Cup. But for the East, I'm taking, I would like to take Toronto. But my question is Samsonov. Um, he, he was with Washington, and he's a good goalie to get you to the playoffs. But can he win it? Now, Dems, Demster... Dempsey from um, Colorado last year kind of proved me wrong. I didn't think that he could get us get oh, Colorado. There. Darcy Kemper, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm thinking the same thing with um, Samsonov. Oh. Can he can he get him there? I'm saying, man, it might be their destiny. But can they get past Florida or uh, uh-huh. Carolina? Yeah, the fans they were yelling, "We want Florida." Yeah, you better be careful. They, they, they wanted home ice, and what? Be careful. Yeah, what happens? Florida won game one, four to two. Uh, so four straight. Yeah, I'm going to pick Florida in six. If they can beat Boston, why can't they beat Toronto? Exactly. They, they start, certainly started off right. And, and what, a, what a game that is. Austin Matthews against Matthew Kuchuk. What an awesome series that is. Okay. Uh, looking at the other side, New Jersey held off uh, New York Rangers in seven. That's their first playoff win since 2012. Carolina took care of the they Islanders. Playoff series win. Yeah, six. playoff series win. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, they took care of the Islanders. Carolina did in six. This one looks like a tough one to me. What do you think there, Gator? Well, Carolina. Um, well, I think, man, both teams. Okay, so we uh, Boston wins the President's Trophy. Then the second best team was Carolina with points. And then the third best team was New Jersey. Now, New Jersey being the Rangers four to nothing on that game seven was um, just shirking in there. Man, that was just amazing to me. Well, Karen Sh- Schmidt. Right, Schmidt the, the goal. Yeah, he came in and three. Mm-hmm. Correct, and he's playing tonight too. He's from there. They're playing as we're speaking right now. Well, he's not going to have a shutout tonight because they're already down three zero. So yeah, yeah. there goes his his. Uh, he gives up uh, like five. Or he gives up game. one. Yeah. He gives up five game goals in game six. Uh, I mean, it matters uh, if he had his Wheaties. I don't know what the. <laughs> Oh, he can play so good and so bad, but uh, <laughs> but Ranta, the goalie for uh, Carolina, I should win bet against him. Well, he's not playing tonight. No, not they're, tonight. They're going Frederick Anderson, Anderson tonight. So, correct. well, but, wait, Ranta gave up 13 goals in five playoffs. And I've never seen so many goalie changes in the playoffs huh? since Game One of the whole playoffs. I was just crazy. Teams are just switching goalies like like right. I've never seen. Well, it should be a low-scoring series, considering, but uh, who knows? I mean, you're going to be a period in five minutes. Uh, well, that's another thing about the playoffs. Uh, you know, since, like the uh, Devils have won, have not won. Ever since we had the bubble, the, the it doesn't seem to be as rough and tough as it was prior to the bubble. It seems yeah. like all of it now is more skillful, like the Avalanche or the uh, Edmonton. Edmonton or uh, Seattle. Just I'm, tough. I'm gonna have to pick Carolina in seven just because of the uh, home ice. Oh, three to one now. Okay, there goes that low yeah, score. I'm, theory out the window. Their own second uh, shot. Um, but, uh, well, uh, if you did have the ticket. I definitely just went over in the second period. So. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so, um, did you make a prediction on there? Um, I like Carolina. Okay, I like okay. Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Moving to the west. Well, I'm gonna pick Big Rich. I'm gonna stay with. I'm staying with Jersey. I like that. I like the. I like the kid from Bern, Bern, Switzerland. He's only 22 years old. You know that there, Gator? Kid's only 22 years old. That's why, you know, he's either hot or cold. I don't know. He's still got hormones going on. <laughs> that makes you dangerous, right? <laughs> yeah, we should no, 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 yeah, no, no, no. you. Yeah. So, so far, you got Florida and uh, Carolina uh-huh. advancing. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so, why? I like it. Okay. So, um, where are we going to go to next? Um, well, you want to move on to the Western Conference? Yeah. Okay. Last we saw, Vegas was up 3 1 over Winnipeg. Yeah. Edmonton was up 3 2 against LA. Dallas was leading 3 2 against Minnesota. Seattle and Colorado were deadlocked at two apiece. What happened there? Okay. Colorado and Seattle. Well, Colorado just took, uh, Seattle just took Colorado's game plan, and especially in that first game, threw it down their throat, um, which was impressive. It was impressive to me, Joe. 
Um, the defending champion, Colorado. Yeah, exactly. And if they can do that and slow them down like they did, I mean, Colorado, you know, they were having their speed in the past in the cycling that they do. And uh, Seattle kind of just sat there and said, okay, we'll just let you. They weren't chasing them, not like all these other teams do. Well, so I always talk about the bear, right? You have to talk about the – what about getting – they let him go from Colorado, and then he comes out and starts killing it against them. Right, exactly, and a uh, um, little revenge. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so yeah. So uh, the other one would be um, Edmonton, right? Is well, that where you wanted say, to go? Well, yeah, but Seattle scored the first goal in each game. Oh, yeah, that's right. Big, and that that was big. They just they took scored the first full goals last night. Yeah, <laughs> first goal in every game. And, Joe, that hasn't happened since Toronto beat Ottawa in 2004, that uh, last series that they won. Right. So Toronto that's did the, the same did. thing. They scored the first goal in every game. That's that six consecutive game seven losses for Colorado. Oh, I know. Wow. I didn't that's want to say to that, Joe. Hard to believe. That's, 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 that's a hard one. Okay. Um, Vegas, Edmonton, Dallas, uh, immediately after our uh, show last week, they took care of business, won the next game, closed out those series. Yeah, four to one. They had to sit and wait for a while. I do want to give credit uh, before we start making predictions to Minnesota center Joel Erickson Eck trying to play with a broken leg yeah, in amazing. game three. True Good hockey luck player. True hockey player. Uh, he went about 20 seconds and uh, he, he suffered tried. that broken leg April 6th, blocking a shot. And uh, yeah. yes, a true hockey player. So credit to him. Um, so what's going to happen in that Edmonton Vegas series? Um, I like Edmonton and Vegas, uh, Brossois, the goalie. Um, not sure. Can he, can he, uh, oh, stop that offense or the draw style, draw style and, right? and, uh, Connor. I don't know. I, I just don't see it. I think Edmonton is going to probably win it in, uh, why? I'm going to say six. Edmonton okay. has lost six straight game ones. Yes. I'm going to pick Vegas in game one. I'm going to give them one more, and I'm going to say Edmonton closes it out at home in six. Yeah, as I don't see Vegas going up to Edmonton and winning, even though we talk about the road teams. No, I do yeah, not. I do. don't see that either. Oh, that's another thing about Carolina, by the way. Carolina has a great home record for, in the playoffs. Not so much on the road, but incredible at home. Oh, correct. Right. Starting off good. So, anyway, that. enjoy the game. So, and, um, so good. Yes. That's some, uh, and how about Woo! Dallas and Seattle? That's some squares. Oh, yeah. Last night, Seattle won game one. I five want, four in overtime. I want it to be five four every game, game seven. I just love this series. Um, I think Dallas is going to win the next game. I think it's going to be one one, and then I'm going to think they're going to split in uh, Seattle too. I think. Um, but overall, if Seattle can beat Colorado, I think they can beat Dallas. So I'm going to take Seattle in that series. Ouch. Okay. Um, first year Dallas coach Peter DeBoer. He's taken New Jersey and San Jose both to the Stanley Cup final mm-hmm. in his first season with the team. And here he is with Dallas. He's been down this road a few times. Joe Pavelski came back. Uh, he's the only one who showed up, apparently. He scored four goals last night in his first game back from a concussion. Well, let me ask you this, all the goals. If, if, if Dallas played uh, Colorado in a seven-game series, who would win? Well, I'm hoping Dallas. But who would win? Not your heart, your head. <laughs> Dallas. Okay. Like, this ain't so, okay. I'm just trying to figure out where you're coming okay. from here. I like Dallas. All right, all right. Okay. Um, so Favelski's 38. He's the oldest to score four goals in the game. I'm picking Dallas in seven. Um, just well, some- Joe, what did they throw if you score four goals? Three's a hat. You have to throw your underwear? No, what do you throw? <laughs> you throw your, something. <laughs> your belt. <laughs> your belt. What do we throw? <laughs> throw your hot dog? I don't know. <laughs> if you score six, you tie two hats together. <laughs> you tie two hats. We're all on the You don't know have many hats. You have to go buy another hat. Four goals in a playoff. Four, you don't, four you don't get in. You don't do anything. Okay. Uh, just real quick, uh, some notes. Uh, first round, of course, was amazing, as always in, in hockey. Seven of eight series went six more games. Each series had at least one overtime game. Mm. We stand now 50 overtime games, 17 overtimes, 22 one goal games. Stunningly, in those 15 overtime games, the road teams are 12 and 3 in overtime. Overall, road teams 33 and 19. Home ice is a bad thing, not a good thing, it seems. Yeah, relevant. Irrelevant. Well, it well if you've been to a hockey game, it's definitely relevant. The power and the the crowd noise, but I mean, like you said, uh, it doesn't it, relate it, it, to the ice. Doesn't relate to wins and losses, obviously. Yeah, uh, no. but it's good for the fans. Right. Well, the biggest event this weekend is the most exciting two minutes in all sports. The 104th, 49th, 149th running of the Kentucky Derby. That's a long time. Mm-hmm. Saturday at Churchill Downs. Tell us about it. 
Yeah. Rock and Ronnie, you're up. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Where are we at? I was just talking to you. Tell us about the road. Kentucky Derby. Producer. Oh, cool. The, yeah, the Kentucky Derby. This Saturday, um, it's a 149th Kentucky Derby. It's at Churchill Downs uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. It will be at uh, Saturday, May 6th at 3.45 p.m. our time, Pacific Coast time. And um, it's a $3 million race. It's a grade one for three-year-olds. Um, it is all Colts. There's no fillies in it um, of the um, all the horses that are in there. And they'll all be at 126 pounds. Uh, um, carry the, carrying uh, with the jockey. And um, so... That's uh, going to be good. It's happening this week, and I've got uh, Gator and I have some some uh, info on some picks and and things. You want to start it off, Gator? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, when I'm handicapping this, I see that Brad Cox, the trainer, has um, three to four horses in it, and, four, I see, yeah. and I see Todd Pletcher has three to four horses in it. So to me, it's going to be the Brad Cox and Todd Pletcher mm-hmm. show. Now. Um, we know Bafford not in it, correct? So the trainer that is AKA Bafford would be uh, Tim Yakteen, right. and he does have two horses in there. The California right. horse would be Practical Move, and he has a long shot as well with um, a Reincarnate. And he's been around a little while, so he's a good trainer. Exactly. So, uh, now, um, but what I like Rodney is Forte's been the favorite all year. He won the Eclipse Award as a two-year-old. Um, He's three to one going off, which is not a really good favorite in my eyes. Right. Won the Florida Derby. We'll won the see. Florida Derby, correct. And of course, these odds can change. It's only Wednesday. Right. That's just in the morning. That's just the morning. Well, if it goes by last year, the horse that's going to win is even in the race right now because he they exactly got- remember that. <laughs> 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 come in, so, remember like, that. Don't make us pick yet. That's, not, that's, like, that's, that's what happens is there's like uh, about 23 horses and only 20 actually race. And if one gets, uh, you know, like it happened last year, well, Rich knocked out, then another one came in. Another thing about Rich, Rich yeah. another thing about Rich Strike is that he was in that twentieth position, the only horse that ever went from that position, because right. that's right on that edge, and it's usually a jinx. So it's the longest drive. Yeah. It's the longest drive. Well, you have to get out fast so that yeah. don't get onto the rail. Yeah, and there's right. like what twenty three now. If, you know, it'll be down to 20 by the time. So Okay, so what I'm saying about Forte is that he has been the favorite forever, but I, I like him if you're going to put him into the exotics, but I'm not going to sing on in my exacta. I always do a dollar exacta box. So I'm going to take Tappet Trice. Tappet Trice is who I'm going to yep. single, and then I'm going to I take like Kings it. Barn and like Forte. It. Like it. And that would be a $6. You say a dollar exacta box, you go a five with six fifteen. You know, it cost you six dollars. Yep. I uh, well, I like or new trifectas. One, like I don't four dollars. Four dollars. I have to take that back. Four dollars. Right. I like to do trifectas, which three horses, mm-hmm. and um, and also the exactas. Also, um, I really um, I like Forte. I mean, you know, I read Ortiz Jr. You know, great jockey, and and he's rode him every time. Um, oh, real good at that distance. Um, but I really like. Angel of Empire. Mm-hmm. Um, Flavin Pratt, great jockey. Um, supposed to be eight to one at this point. Um, real good on that, that distance, which is a mile and a quarter. And all these horses that are in this race, none of them have really run a mile and a quarter. They've run a mile and an eighth, mile and a sixteenth. Doesn't seem like that mm-hmm. far, but it is. Some horses, then you know, goes, the, lose it. Then it goes more with the Preakness and more with the well, Preakness is a sixteenth less. And then the um, Belmont is a mile and a half. Right. Right. Now, Lady, so Belmont's along Lady, the Lady Gator, New York. Yeah. Lady Gator does agree with you. She likes Angel of the Empire as well. Yeah. I really and, like and it. she's got a trifecta box uh, with Forte, Tappet Trice, and Angel of Empire. Yeah. And I like Tappet Trice, no doubt. Uh, Luis Saez, great mm-hmm. jockey. Um, real good on that distance. Um, and I do. Um, so the, those are the three I like, actually, are 5, 14, and 15, which is. Tap it Trice, Angel of Empire, and Forte, I like. But I also like Kings Barnes and another top pleasure horse. And yeah, I, I really like that that horse. And also um Skinner, number nine, that kind of be a long shot for me. I mean, 20 to one right now. That's actually um um his father, um, sire was Curlin 
Mm-hmm. You remember Curlin? Mm-hmm. Um, great racehorse. So real good at that distance also. Had um, a little problem last time out. And if he clears that up, kind of made a wide move. You know, Skinner is a, 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 a long shot that I would I would take. Now that you're so. bringing up long shots, uh, reincarnate's got John Vasquez on him. The last True. case. Yes. True. And uh, it just pops out to me because on Practical Move, we have Ramon. Vasquez on there. So I'm trying to pick, I'm trying to figure out to me, um, before I see this, I would expect the jock is to be switched. So there is a reason that they, um, Timmy Hattin is putting you know, well, Tim well, Vasquez and Vasquez. Were they born in the same hospital? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But maybe. Well, some of these, the thing is, is that some of these jockey changes were because there's another horse in the same race that that jockey has ridden before. So Right, so the, the horses that I'm talking about are both um, done, are both trained by Tim Yachting. Right. right, so there's I'm trying to figure out there's a question mark on why John is on a fifty to one horse and why Ramon is on a horse that was supposed to win the was supposed to give Forte a, a run for his money right. all year since right. October. Yeah, no, that's uh, yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying, uh, and and Johnny Velasquez is a really Good jockey, and um, so who's on reincarnate now? So, but I'm with you with Saez because Saez, he's fifty to one. Now, if you if you like Forte, and you, you're not going to get that much money if everybody's going to be betting Forte, I say do the daily double with the Kentucky Oaks. Now, the Kentucky Oaks is uh, Friday, but that, Saez is on Darth Vader, which is twenty one horse. Well, Wet Paint is the favorite, and that is Brad Cox's uh, uh, horse, but uh, Flavian Pratt's on that one. So I like the daily double right there. If you're going to take uh, Forte, um, pick one of them, the Kentucky Oaks. Wet paint's the favorite, but I like Darth Vader. Diaz is on him, on her, other female horses. Yeah, one more thing on um, back on the Derby. Uh, Mage, mm-hmm. it's M-A-G-E. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the horse that um, Luis Saez was on. Now he's going to be on tap at Trice. And um, I, you know, that 15 to 1, but... I I really like this horse. He actually mm-hmm. finished second to Forte mm-hmm. in the Florida Derby. And um that was a mile and an eighth, I believe. Yeah. And um so I'm that's a no, that's that's that, that's, that's a good one because yeah. Castellano is a really good job. Oh, okay. so Mage came in second that's on that one. race? Yeah, we were saying, yes. Ronnie. Yeah. Okay. Behind yeah, behind Forte. Now, obviously, yeah, different race, different track, all that, but still, um, you have to consider it. And um and that was a, a jockey change, um, but um, the jockey, uh, what Castellanos is going to be on him now. Good jockey, you know, on me. So I like, I kind of like that one as a long shot right now. It's at 15 to one. Um, and the other one that I had brought up um, was actually, what, uh, 20 to one. The other um, long shot. Yeah, Skinner. So I kind of like all those and i'm going to do a bunch of different things with uh, some trifectas and maybe some exact boxes always box it right mm, correct like always. we talked about before back always. it up you know if I, I want one and five well that one and five and five and one and yeah it's right. double the price but you got to cover yourself mm-hmm. and uh, and of course when you're doing trifectas and exactas yeah you hope the longer shot comes in first because that changes the money you know right. if, if the favorite comes in first even if you hit the trifecta, which I did last year at the Santa Anita, I hit the trifecta and I hit exactas. Um, they weren't as much as they would have been because the favor, the lower odds actually came in first. And that changes the pace. What was the odds last year on? 85. Was it 85 to 1? 80. I think it ended up 80. 80 to 1, yeah. something like that. That's the one you want on your trifecta. <laughs> right, exactly. And and you know, yeah, now, now we didn't even look at him last year because we didn't wasn't right. even in the race. Well, right. okay, so if you're looking if you're looking at that angle, there is a horse that did win um Churchill down that nobody's talking about, and that's confidence gain. Because right. kind of, kind of, he's kind of the same thing as Bruce Strike was last year, but nobody was talking about him right. one there. So that'd be the one that nobody's talking about. But well, yeah, go to one. one. And he's he's one. About, he really likes a wet track. It's not supposed to be wet. Um, it's and supposed to be it's supposed to be cloudy in seventy five by the race time at the Kentucky Derby. Even though you were saying like you know the day before it might be raining, uh-huh. well, you were correct. Um, and and I like mutters and and a lot of those mutters like that that like wet tracks. Not that they don't do well on dirt, on dry tracks. They're just 
really good on wet tracks mm -hmm. and I usually won't pick them if um, it's not rainy and sloppy. Mm -hmm. um, Horses are picky. But they don't want to Exactly. Run but, uh, but otherwise, yeah, that uh, confidence is uh, a horse to look at that again, you know, likes it wet. And um, so we'll see. Well, we'll put those on the, we'll put those on the yeah. site. Please check out our website tonight. Uh, great articles from Lady Gator and all our picks will be on our website. Everybody's picks. And my wife will pick the one with the prettiest tail. <laughs> right. So she'll have that pick out there. Or, or the or the, the silks, the jockey color, the you know, colors. what cap and what silks they have on. Well, it's like the Rich Strike had the prettiest <laughs> tail. I wish uh, I would have bet that last year. Uh, right. <laughs> so the uh, NFL draft, got, got to talk about that last Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Any thoughts on what happened in uh, Kansas City? Well, I think we have to talk about Houston, don't we? I mean, off the bat, you know, I mean, well, they couldn't obviously. decide if they wanted – C.J. Stroud or Will Anderson Jr. So they took both of them. Yep. So they they traded a first for the first round pick. Bryce up. Young went one, and then two and three. C.J. Stroud. Stroud, like we said, mm -hmm. and then they took Will Anderson three. They traded down. So they traded. Uh, I mean, to probably give up. What would they? Give, what would, I don't even know what they gave up. Way too much. And, <laughs> and uh, they were smart to pick uh, Stroud number two, but I, I thought it was pretty stupid. Uh, that they traded all that they did for number three. I didn't actually write down exactly what it was, but it was, they have too many holes, Houston, uh, you know, to fill. So I didn't think uh, that was a smart move. Well, I, I think what Arizona did the smart move by moving down getting more picks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they have more holes to fill than Houston. So um, that, I mean, you want to get believe you, you want to get your, you get your offense, your defensive yeah. captain. These two are always going to be linked together. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I New coach, give me my give me my quarterback, give me my my signal caller on defense, and um, that's what he wanted. There are a few notes. Um, Seattle um, should have traded down instead of taking uh, Devon Witherspoon there, the safety. Uh, Las Vegas um, got Tyree Wilson. Uh, he was a Red Raider. Now he's a, a Raider. Right. That was a really good pick. Detroit, they could have traded down and got Jameer Gibbs. Instead, they picked him at 12. They could have traded down like six, eight picks, probably. I probably would have got them in the second round, I would think. Maybe even the second round. Right. So, uh, yes. Oh, boy. Okay. So, there was a 12 and 33. Uh, pick 12 and 33 were gone and a 2024 20, first round pick and a 24 third round pick. That's way too much. You're way. That was crazy. So, uh, anyway. Um, we'll see if it works out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. has been kind of at the bottom there for a while. So, they have to make some. Bold moves, yeah. Uh, but I thought that, uh, like you said, I can't believe two 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 running backs, Bijan Robinson with eight. I couldn't believe that was a surprise trick to me. Yeah. Well, the Jets, uh, there's Aaron Rodgers. He wanted offense. He got defense first round, just like when he was at Green Bay. Nothing right. changes anyway. Well, uh, Tennessee, they got Will Levis in the second round. Now that was something. Yeah, it was tough to watch him <laughs> on, yeah. uh, during the draft. He was. Uh, being picked over, off, over again and over again and over again, and then finally he didn't go to the second day. Yeah. So he said, "I'm very quickly second round." Right. Uh, Twelve quarterbacks, in fact, were picked in the first five rounds. That's the Brock Purdy effect, obviously. Right. Because you can find one deep in there. Well, I think the mm -hmm. Detroit did really good getting, uh, you know, Hendon Hooker. Yes. Uh, in the third round, it was a good pickup for them. I thought Detroit did good, you know, besides picking the Jamar Gibbs, but. Right. You know, they did lose their running back. Um, Williams went to, I think, he went to yeah. uh, and Atlanta. They traded, and they traded DeAndre Swift, too. Right. And so they needed we some help. Randall they... Cobb is on the Jets now. So uh, maybe they don't. <laughs> yeah. He goes He's wherever like, his little buddy goes. <laughs> <laughs> Batman and Robin those two. But I think Philly won the draft. I mean, they, had, they just took two stud uh, mm -hmm. Bulldogs uh, championship. These two guys were champions two years in a row, back to back champions. They got Jalen Carter at ninth, and then Nolan Smith fell all the way to thirtieth. Well, we'll see if Jalen Carter can stay out of prison, and then we'll go from there. Well, I mean, he's looking at misdemeanors, so I mean, he's not going to be in prison. I did see. No, I mean the next time he does. Oh, something. the next time he does something, David. I mean, hopefully you learn from your lesson. Well, you I don't know about these guys, man. These are <laughs> <laughs> guys. Where is CD Lamb right now? Uh, <laughs> and, anyway, so. Well, uh, other quick notes, uh, Baltimore quarterback, Lamar Jackson, finally signed a contract, five-year deal, $260 million, 185 guarantee. So I think it was the same thing they well. offered him last year. I think it's the same exact contract, pretty close. But uh, no. at least they can put the drama away. He did save some money on a, an agent fee. He doesn't have to you – know, right. his mom's his agent, so. 10%, that would right. be uh, quite a bit. Right. 26 mil. Nice. Um, 
XFL championship this Saturday at five o'clock. Uh, any thoughts, anybody? Mm. Uh, <laughs> defenders, DC, yeah, DC, yeah, DC, defenders yeah. Yeah. Um, Arlington. Did you see Arlington pull off the upset last week? Yeah, I was kind of shocked a little bit. I think I was doing my heart more than my head. Yeah, well, you're doing you got one right and one, one wrong. wrong. And yeah. DC is the team that deserves it. They've been but that don't mean they're gonna win. No, it doesn't. We did during the USFL, the the number one seed you know, Birmingham won last year. So oh yeah. I would say under that pattern, I would if I put a little wager on that, I would probably take take the points. Take the, yeah, I think it's six right now, right? And, right. Or I try, I kind of like the under altogether. So I mean, because okay. defenders play good defense so far. Well, so, we should uh quickly get to some baseball news. Uh, who's hot and cold? Major League Baseball. All right, Joe. Well, I'm just going to go through what happened at the, the end of April. I'll just go through okay. the April ones. Uh, of course, we had Tampa Bay, amazing. We, you guys talked about that to death last week. Um, Pittsburgh, another amazing one. They're at a .690 in win percentage. Only lost nine games. We have two other teams that lost nine games. That was Baltimore and Atlanta. Atlanta, not so shocking, but Baltimore kind of shocks me a little. But Rock and Ronnie brought up a point that uh kind of left off where they left off last year. Start yep. back up where they left yep. off last year yeah, for Baltimore. A, yeah, they have well, a team. They won six straight series, Baltimore. They're, yep. uh, they're terrific. They yeah. came on, and the, that doesn't shock me. The Pirates uh, a little bit, but, you know, they're um, – You can get them at 100 to 1 odds right now still, yeah, and they're right. leaving there. And you can get – you can get the Rangers, the other leader of the West. You can get them at forty to one odds right now to win the World Series. Right. So you got some, you got some long dogs out there. I well, mean, Texas was supposed to be better, and um, I think uh, they will be. Well, you got to grow them. You got you got twenty wins. And you know, if if he's healthy, you're going to get twenty wins. That's going to get you. He's already hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. Okay, well, he's already on the yeah, ice. <laughs> And he has a history of getting hurt. And um, so we'll see. Bruce that. Bochy's managing. So that's an improvement there um, for Texas. As to finish out the hot list, uh, we had two teams that uh, are at 10 losses. That would be Toronto and Milwaukee. Not too much of a surprise there. Um, Bo Bichette is playing great right now. He's five for five last crazy. night again. Yeah, I remember his his um, dad, Dante, Dante Bichette. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Blake Street Bomber. Yeah. Now, this one shouldn't shock me as much because we live here and, you know, Reno has the Aces and they won the championship last year for minor league. But Arizona's um, giving Dodgers and Padres a little run. A little run there, which is pretty fun to watch. Yeah. The. Okay. Um, you want to go to the cold list, Joe? Yeah, let's get the cold list. Really. Well, Joe, let's just get this one out of the way because um, Oakland is 6-23, and 23, Joe. Okay, they lost 21 games in April. I think it was 21. Is that a 20? 20, 23. 23 in April. They're 6-23 mm-hmm. in April. Um, so Colorado, 9-20. and 20. St. Louis, that's the shocker to me, 10-19. and 19. Um, Kansas City, not so much a shocker. They're 7-22. and 22. And the White Sox. The Joe, the White Sox, yeah. man, they 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 win their first. Well, they tie their first series with Houston. It was a four game series, and they have lost the next eight. Joe have not won one series. Yeah, they just uh, won the last two, and I'm a, I, I root for the White Sox, and I think they're going to be okay. But we'll see. And and the Cardinals, they got a lot of talent. Um, they'll they'll be all right. And I'll tell you uh, something right now. If if they don't fix it pretty quick, uh, I'd be. Uh, Looking around me, if I was a manager, well, the, the Chicago White Sox, the teams that they lost to was San Francisco, Pittsburgh, Minnesota, Baltimore, Philly, Tampa right. Bay. So they're good teams, is what I'm saying. They had to play sure. Tampa Bay twice, sure. um, but man, they better. They, they remind me of the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, drinking that Kool Aid, the they're going to do something. That's the thing about Tampa Bay. You know, they're really good. They're good every year. They don't spend a lot of money. You know, in that big win streak they started with, you know, if you look at it, they played some really bad teams at the time, and uh, you still can't take it away from them. They're professional teams, but um, um, they're they're for real. They're not going to stay that way with all you know that much of a, a, a separation between wins and losses. But yeah. a lot of competition in that division. My Cardinals. That's the most competitive division there is in the NL, uh, AL East. So my Cardinals zero and ten in series openers. So that's not going to start your. Uh, Season off too well. Correct. Okay. Long ways. Well, I do have one thing to put on there. I know Ronnie does. I want to say one thing. Uh, if you look at the Mets, the Mets are hitting the ball very well. Yeah. Um, they're getting, is it Matt uh, Scherzer? Scherzer is coming back. I think he's, he's going to pitch tonight. Tonight. Yeah. Tonight. And, and, and 
And Verlander hasn't pitched yet. And yeah. He'll be back. I think yeah. he pitches tomorrow. So he, yeah. I think he's at least this week. My point is they've gone 10 out of their last 12. They've went over. Mm-hmm. So um, you, a little tidbit there. If you want right. to bet the overs with the Mets are hitting the ball very well. Um, so something to look at. Yeah. All right. So, uh, but Ronnie. Yes. Before we leave baseball, anything yes. else uh, you want to add? Or uh, I, I mm-hmm. took some notes down. You took from, notes from from, from, uh, from what you told me yesterday. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you can Should talk. I, you can talk right. about that stuff. That's fine. Okay. Zach Gallon's uh, twenty-eight scoreless uh, streak is done. Arizona's uh, starting pitcher, uh, twenty-eight innings. That's pretty good. He went forty-four and a half last year. That's right. One time. Jordan Walker, the guy we were uh, talking about St. Louis a lot at the beginning of the season, he got sent down to Triple A. He's just going to adjust a little bit and get a lot more at bats, and uh, he'll be back up. Okay. Besides the Grom, we got uh, Minnesota's Kenta Maeda is out for fifteen. Aaron Judge, that's a big one. Mm-hmm. Ten days. Yeah, he's out. They went a couple, two, three days with like hope and not, you know, because he hasn't played. Did you see a slide? It looked like a yeah. belly flop. I know. It's and, like, uh, come on, man, learn how to slide. Right? <laughs> the, but he, like, he played Thursday, and then he didn't play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they hadn't. They were hoping he could come back, and then now they realize, okay, we got to put him on the IL, the injured list. But that goes back to Friday because he has he didn't play since then. So that ten day IL, those days count since okay. then. Okay, San Francisco, uh, Mike, your your Stremski and Brendan Coffer, they're out ten days. Seattle's uh, starting pitcher Robbie Ray done for the season. Mm, yeah, terrible. That's a big. That's a big. That's a big Cy Young winner. That's oh, a big Robbie deal. Yeah, that's a big deal. Uh, kind of, sort of. Um, Related, Medicine Bumgarner got released from Arizona. $34 million, still uh, yeah. on his contract. Um, he puts the bum in Bumgarner now. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he's yeah. that seven-day thing, and but nobody wanted him, right? So um, yeah. does it mean, you know... 23 million reasons why not he to might, pick him up. You know? He might not go somewhere. Well, yeah, now if a team goes for him, they... They won't have to pay all that. They'll have to pay the min, which is what eighteen, nineteen well, million. But the minimum's probably less than that, wouldn't you think? Maybe like a couple million or so. I don't well, know. the the standard minimum for a player that's been around a while. Really? Yeah. Wow, yeah. well, that's a lot. I would, I would, you know, we'll check yeah. that. To yeah, make we'll sure that. Uh, Shohei Otani is batting average against people batting. Is 102 yeah, in amazing. six starts. That's, that's the amazing. best since 1916. That's right. He doesn't and that's, 15, and that's a prequel to my you gotta he doesn't <laughs> just he doesn't just hit, but he uh, and he was and he had a lot of great games and then he had a rough game and he's still looking good. Okay. So pitching and hitting. Xander Bogarts has now hit a home run in the United States, Canada, England, and Mexico. The only that's player the ever, only player that ever that. Did is in four major, you know, baseball sports. Because um, San Diego and San Francisco were and playing in Mexico City. And exactly, and they're, they're those pro sports in those mm-hmm. countries. Um, it's not MLB, but they're pro sports, mm-hmm. pro baseball. Well, NASCAR uh, went to Dover last week. How did they finish? Huh. Well, Raj Chastain has more uh, apologizing to do. Uh, he, he brought he's the out, bad boy. He's the bad boy, but uh, he did cause the last wreck. Uh, brought out the last yellow. So, uh, Ross he went into the pits, got put on four new tires, and uh, Truex went in and put on two new tires. He was leading the race before all that happened. Uh, before Ross uh, took out a uh, Kyle Larson, um, but uh, Truex uh, ended up with the two tires and kept uh, Ross behind him, so he ended up winning his. We're just racing over 50 races. Yeah, 58 Joe. races. That's crazy. He, he was due. He was due. Yeah. He's always good on that short trip. So another toy. He, he was as high as 14 to 1 when it opened, uh, went off like a 10 to 1. Mm-hmm. And uh, Toyota, yeah. Toyota was plus 245. So decent prices uh, last week. Yeah, right. Alex well, Bowman is out three to four weeks. He fractured a vertebrae racing sprint cars during the week well, before the race. But I guess that's what these guys do. do that. That's what they do. And you never even know about it until somebody gets hurt. Yeah. Who do you like in Kansas next Sunday? Well, I like this. I like when they do the restarts in Kansas, Joe, because that three white, four white is excellent stuff. Um, but uh, last year, Kurt Busch won it. And the Toyotas uh, took five out of the six spots with Kyle Larson getting second. So you would think Toyota, but I'm not going with Toyota. I'm going to go with Kyle Larson. He has had the fastest car every week. Um, just bad luck constantly. He's due. All right, so I'm going to go against the Toyotas and take Chevy. Okay. Well, we're to that time, ladies and gentlemen, where 
It's those moments we've all been waiting for. The stories that make us furious about bets that appeared surely to be winners, but in the end, something went horribly wrong. They ended up being losers. It's a segment we call You Got Hosed. You Got Hosed. Well, Joe, I'll start off You Got Hosed. I got a host by none other than the guy you were talking about, Atani. Um, he was had an ERA, like you said, one point, his average was one point, whatever. Well, one point eight yeah, five. exactly. And his, and his earned run was just right there. And so I take them um, pretty heavy against your A's because you told me they had the worst pitching in baseball <laughs> last week. And so I took your advice and said, Atani doesn't give up any runs, and the A's give up a lot of runs. So I'm going to give the run and a half, which I know Gator get it looked at me right now. I'm not supposed to do the, run, the puck line. I'm not supposed to do the run line. You can give up two and a half. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I wish I would have. Wouldn't have done that because uh, the Angels jump out 5 nothing lead in the fifth. Just, I mean, your A's are pitching just like they always do. They give it up five runs in the third inning. Atani sets down nine straight with six strikeouts. I'm turning the game off. I'm like, he doesn't even get five guys are going to get on base, not less five runs. <laughs> and what happens in the fourth inning? Oh, he gives up two home runs, hits two batters, uh, can't find the strike zone, um, and gives up five runs in the fourth inning. Funny how that happens. And it's so, funny how that happens. Sure it's not I funny know. when you have your ticket and you have your mouth wide open. And so <laughs> I'm like, this is not happening. This has to be a, a, a mis- I wouldn't look, and sure enough, it happened. So it's five to five. I'm thinking, okay, I'm not going to cover that two and a half. I have to win by two runs, right? Well, the Angels come back, and your, your pitching does it again. There, they give up another three runs. Perfect. I'm up eight to five going into the eighth inning, right? Just only give up one run. That's right, give up one run. And who do they bring in there? Uh, well, they brought in um, you see uh, Venezuelan's finest. Um, they bring in. Uh, Whoever he is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it is uh, Jose Cojada, who should be pitching for the Oakland A's. Because he gets in there and he gives up three straight hits. So now it's, I got my one run. It's one out. I need a double play bad, right? A double play gets me out of it. A one hopper to the second baseman. Can't be any worse, but no Tanner from the Bad News Bears is playing second base. And uh, it goes right between his legs. And there it goes. They won 8-7. to seven, And uh, I got hosed. Oh, brother, brother. <laughs> that was a double. That was a, I got those twice. That's what we talked about when I was giving you those stats for uh, Otani. Even in that, with that game, he's still one point eight five. That inning, the one inning, he just had one oh, bad yeah. inning, and that'd be on my ticket. So for all that, the Ace didn't even win the game. Now we know he's shielding. I know, right? <laughs> right? Okay. Well, my host story was um, uh, the San Diego San Francisco games down in Mexico. The first game on Saturday ended up 16 to 11 San Diego. So there was 27 runs scored in that in or in that game. Well, the books on Sunday for the second game had the over and under at 21, Joe. I am I'm from Colorado and I have never ever seen 21 on anything like that. Right. So anyways, now the betters did very good. They all took the unders and went down to 19 before the game went off. And uh, San Diego did end up winning six to four in that game, so there was only a total of ten runs scored. But for this week, I'm gonna have to say the books they host themselves. Yeah, you know, I don't think people realize, like, you know, yeah. Mexico City where they played that is like over seven thousand feet elevation. I mean, it's higher in Colorado, right? Yes. It's you know, it's yeah. crazy. And so there was like eleven home runs in that first game. Yeah. And, and uh, were they throwing underhand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, they call, they're the guys throwing up in the air and saying something. Well, maybe they had that videotape from the Houston Astros that they were doing with no, things coming. I don't know. That's right. Crazy. That's it, crazy. It, the elevation is 7,400, so I can understand the books kind of, you, you know, they had it at 15 on the game on Saturday. So if they would have left it at 15 on Sunday, I'm sure people would have took the over. Yeah. Probably. That, that's how it was. Even though they didn't take the bait. No, but uh, as far as that elevation, I mean, there was track, track and field. Records that lasted for like yeah. 25 years after Mexico City. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, Joe, do you got hose? You got oh, like your hose is going to be something to do with the brew. Oh, it has to be. <laughs> it's not the on the bus. How'd you know? I didn't check yet. 
I saw the game, Joe. I saw it. <laughs> I was going to give you a condolence call, but when that happened, I was like, no. no if you're a Celtic fan, you should be a Bruins fan. I was bummed, too. Yeah, yeah. I was bummed. <laughs> I'm just not a heavy and Bruins fan to you. But, yeah. Well, like, all, uh, all that effort to be the best regular season team ever, and they accomplished that. But to go up 3-1, losing the first round, yeah. that's hugely disappointing. I also blame head coach Jim Montgomery for not benching an obviously injured goalie in Linus Omar. So all the Bruins fans like me who got their hopes way up, we all got hopes. Broken hearts in that way. You got hoes. So that's it for the show. I'd like to thank Big Richard Martin, Gator Gates, Rock and Ronnie McKinnon, all our contributors, our editor, producer, and engineer, Cornelius, and all you listeners out there. And next week, we look forward to bringing you another episode of Covering the Field. You've been listening to Covering the Field. Email us at coveringthefield at gmail.com for all your comments or questions. Find us on Twitter at Covering Field. And of course, always check out the website for our picks of the week and updated articles. Coveringthefield.com. 